Hitman franchise recently came out with a notoriously difficult brand new game mode where the player takes down various crime syndicates by completing entirely randomized missions called Freelancer. This means that the number of targets, who the targets are, and even the spawn are completely random. I decided to take down Hitman Freelancer without using any weapons. I'll have to use ordinary items in order to take down these totally random targets and quite literally make the world my weapon. I'm not allowed to use anything designed to kill someone. This means I can't use guns, knives, explosives, or any lethal poisons. With that being said, let's just jump into the run. The beginning of the run was definitely the most difficult. I would have to take down my targets with literally nothing. If I spawned deep in enemy lines with nothing to help me escape, I could immediately lose the run. However, I had a plan. I ensured that I chose a syndicate that would have objectives that are possible to achieve without items. This would allow me to make money early in the game in order to buy some key items later in the run. With this in mind, I chose to take down Big Pharma, since many objectives included lack of witnesses or subduing guards, something I could do with no items. My first mission took me to Mumbai. It was the only mission that I thought I had a decent chance of acquiring some of the goals, as the other mission's objectives were impossible without getting some poison first. Luckily, my target spawned in a pretty easy to access location. He spawned in Rangan's Tower, a giant movie set in the middle of the city. The reason this is so easy to infiltrate is that there's a guard alone behind the building in the construction site that I can just walk into without being seen. This gives me complete access to the majority of the building. My target was right next to an empty room with a crate in it, meaning I could throw something on the ground to get him curious, he would walk in and I could take him out silently. This allowed me to get the no bodies discovered goal, assuming I don't take anyone out for the rest of the mission. My other objective was to get the perfect shooter goal. Usually this means that I can't miss a single shot and it has to collide with a person. But I'm not using guns, which means I never miss, giving me some extra creds for later down the line. This single choice to take on Mumbai first actually ended up making the run. During every mission, there's going to be a supplier that I can use the money I make from objectives to buy items that I can take between levels. Thanks to dumb luck, on the next mission in China, the supplier had the item I needed the most a titanium crowbar. With this crowbar, I could break open doors, allowing me to access better loot and new routes to my target, while also being able to use it to very quickly knock out enemies if I ever needed to. Thanks to the money I made during my previous mission, I had just enough to buy the crowbar and some emetic poison. It was a good thing I did, because after getting spotted trying to complete the timed silent takedown goal, I ended up having to take down multiple guards, and without the crowbar, I would not have stood a chance against them. Dying early in a mission like this would alert my foes I was trying to take them down and drastically increase the difficulty of every future level by causing them to turn to alerted territories, but we'll get more into that later. I just barely managed to survive the conflict, and since my target was a guard, that means they came to me after all guards in the level were alerted, allowing me to take them down in the process of trying to fight my way to survival. After that lucky break, it was time for the biggest hurdle of the run, taking down the crime syndicate leader in a showdown. This level would be completely different than the previous ones. I wouldn't actually know who my target was, I would have to deduce who they might be based on a description I was given. This means I would have to monitor every suspect to see if they matched the physical and behavioral description. Attacking the wrong suspect could alert the real target I was there, causing them to flee the level. Alongside this, there would be assassins and lookouts disguised as regular people in order to spot me and prevent me from getting to my target. To top it all off, failing one of these missions causes the run to end without question. I would lose every item that I had and have to start from scratch. Luckily, I had prepared for this mission in advance by ensuring it would be on a very particular map, Whittleton Creek. When I saw the list of maps I would be taking on initially, I knew I had to save this one for last. This level takes place in a suburban style neighborhood, but more importantly has a neighborhood party with extremely loose restrictions that anyone is allowed in at any time. On top of this, every lawn and backyard has neatly kept bushes that are perfect for hiding bodies in and are rarely walked through. Since my target would likely be wandering the majority of the level, there was a good chance they would attend the party at some point, where I could safely identify them, tail them, and eliminate them. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. I was able to identify my target right outside the party. She casually walked into the neighbor's yard, which made things difficult, since I wasn't allowed in there without trespassing, but despite there being multiple guards to prevent people from getting into one backyard, I was still able to tail her without too much trouble. Once she was walking through thick grass, I struck with my crowbar, finished the job, and escaped before anyone could find the body, as she lay there hidden in the grass. Even her guard was none the wiser as to what happened. After returning to the safe house for my reward, Diana so kindly gifted me with a gun that I can't use. 
so I didn't really have much of a choice but to move on to the next syndicate. Since I was now on to my second of four syndicates, I would have to deal with the occasional alerted territory that I mentioned earlier. When a territory is alerted, both the target along with many NPCs will be suspicious more often, increasing the likelihood of being spotted. This can also mean that there are more guards and more cameras. I was fortunate enough for the alerted territory to be Dartmoor Manor, a giant murder mystery style mansion. This manor is covered with ledges and drainage pipes outside of it that allow me to travel from floor to floor without being spotted, making the number of NPCs relatively inconsequential. Using this knowledge, I escaped my horrid spawn at the top of the manor and made my way towards the lower floors. After using my trusty crowbar to get a disguise as a guard, I began approaching my target, who was a guard on one of the upper floors. After getting the guard to slip and accidentally fall off the railing, I was able to make my escape and fulfill my silent assassin goal in order to make some more money. At this point in the run, I had made enough money to buy whatever items I needed, since they were all very cheap as they weren't actual weapons. I just needed to start checking every cellar I could during my missions. Thanks to my crowbar and the fact that there were no more alerted territories for this syndicate, I was able to breeze through the remaining levels and get to the second syndicate leader. However, as I was in Ambrose Island, I bought the second key item for the run, a lockpick. This would function similar to the crowbar in that I could get through locked doors. However, the key difference is that this allows me to do it silently and without alerting anyone on the other side of the door, opening up my options even more. I also learned that sellers really don't care about anything you do, as I sedated, eliminated, and stored my target in the home of the seller while he watched, and he just did not care. Surprisingly, taking down the second crime syndicate actually ended up being pretty easy. I had to take them down in Paris, inside a huge hotel. I got extremely lucky, as the second suspect I looked into was clearly my target. I used instinct to watch them perform their tells through the walls while they were in a restricted area. And let me say, this target just handed me the win on a silver platter. They walked into a usually locked hotel room with only one other person and a guard. And then the guard immediately left, allowing me to walk into the door he just opened without as much as a glance from anyone. I was really expecting a bit more stealth to need to go into this, but I wasn't about to waste this opportunity. I took down my target with the crowbar along with the other person in the room to prevent them from snitching to any guards, and I was on my way less than 10 minutes after starting the mission. Diana gifted me another gun, and I was ready to choose my next syndicate. At this point in the run, my objective when choosing which syndicate to take down changed. As I mentioned, I didn't need to worry about money, so I just wanted to choose maps that were relatively simple to complete. For me, this meant medium to small maps with a couple highly populated, unsecured areas. This meant a map like Colorado, one filled head to toe with guards, was off the table. I also avoided maps that I don't really enjoy playing, so you won't be seeing Haven Island anytime soon. By this point in the run, I had a pretty good strategy for most levels. Find a secluded guard or staff member, crowbar them, and explore the level for moments my target is alone or easily distractible. But remember earlier in the video where I mentioned I could spawn deep in an enemy territory? That happened in Paris, except this time on a map with an alerted territory. Even if I was able to get a guard outfit, they would almost all be extremely suspicious of me. I spawned in the back of the map, high up on a construction site, a spot normally incredible for sniping. However, I couldn't do that. So, after climbing down, I realized there was only one spot I could enter the level, which was being watched by a camera and two NPCs. I couldn't be quiet this time. I would have to fight my way out of spawn to even get close to my target. By making noise and eventually committing a crime in front of the camera, I was able to lure out a huge number of guards, allowing me to play Ring Around Rosie with them and my crowbar. After about 10 minutes of abusing the guards' lack of object permanence, I finally had access to the actual level. After destroying the camera evidence for that sweet, sweet bonus experience, I finally bought the third key item for the run the professional screwdriver. I got it a bit late, so it wasn't as useful as it could have been, but this lets me set a few different traps in the future, and more importantly, allows me to instantly take someone out quietly or from a distance if thrown, meaning I don't have to take time after knocking someone out to finish them off. Now that I'd gathered all these items, the run became a lot easier. So easy, in fact, that I completely breezed through my next Syndicate showdown in Dartmoor. Now, you might be thinking at this point, this run doesn't sound that hard, and I was starting to think the same thing. 
So I decided to make my final showdown a bit more interesting, and attempted to complete every single goal available. This meant pushing the target to kill them, poisoning them with a medic poison, poisoning a guard with a syringe, and arranging a meeting. First, I had to find my target and make sure that this would actually be possible, as a push kill could be extremely okay. difficult with all the assassins around the map. However, a key note is that this showdown was taking place on Sapienza, which is ripe with cliffs and oceanic areas to dump a suspect's body. If my target got near a cliff or shoreline, I could certainly achieve that goal. The mission got off to a strong start. I spawned in a tower right outside the camera room with only one guard, so I I was able to quickly grab his disguise and destroy the recordings. After getting my outfit, I made a beeline for ground level. There were three suspects right outside the door. However, I was able to quickly knock all of them off the list as none of them even matched the physical description. If I was going to be able to get every single achievement, I was going to need to safely get disguises. I knew there was one spot on this map that could make it happen the shop outside the mansion that's closed during the time of the mission. Inside this shop, there's almost every single outfit on the entire map, including mansion security. This outfit is very difficult to come by in a normal run, but thanks to the lockpick, I could get inside this locked shop without anybody noticing. With this outfit, I could safely run around almost the entire map. After running around in my mansion security outfit for a while, I had a prime suspect. I hadn't seen him perform all the tells yet, but he perfectly matched the physical description and he had an assassin following him. Usually a tell that they are your real target. As I was tailing him waiting for a tell, I realized that the assassin was wide open to be taken out, so I quickly lured him into an empty room and eliminated him, allowing me to tail my suspect without any issues. After tailing my prime suspect for a while, he performed the second tell, smoking, confirming that he was my real target and giving me the confidence to put my plan into motion. However, the biggest challenge was going to be seeing if I could push him in order to eliminate him, after poisoning him. Once someone has been emetically poisoned, the game decides that they cannot be interacted with until they puke and return to normal behavior. That means to get a push elimination on a poisoned target, I first have to subdue them and then push their unconscious body off of a surface. As I continued to watch him, I realized that my target stops by the ocean to check his phone right at the edge of the pier with almost no one around him. Now, if his assassin had been in the picture, this would have not helped me very much at all, as I would have immediately been killed by the assassin. But obviously, the assassin's not with us anymore, so this is a prime opportunity. Now that I knew how I wanted to take my target out, I needed to first arrange a meeting. To arrange a meeting, I need to take down a different suspect, take their phone, and use it to call all nearby suspects to a meeting. While this will delay my target going back to the pier, it was necessary in order to get every single goal. I isolated someone who I crossed off the suspect list and was able to take their phone in a small linen closet. Once I took his phone, I arranged a meeting in a sewer, but unfortunately, the most interesting person who showed up was Mario. The other suspects didn't even have any guards with them, who I was hoping to be able to take out to make eliminating my target even easier. While I was holding the meeting, I saw that my target was leaving the area by the pier I was waiting for him to come to, meaning I was going to have a lot of free time on my hands to run around. So naturally, I started goofing around while I waited. As I was goofing, I vaulted up some railing to avoid a lookout, and when I saw my target starting to approach the area again, I figured I could do it the other way as well. Instead, 47 decided to throw a random woman over a balcony, and somehow nobody saw. So, with that extreme stroke of luck, I promptly stopped goofing around and waited patiently with the fishermen, who weren't much for conversation once they finished talking about the latest town gossip. After about 10 minutes, my target finally approached the pier. This was my time to strike. I quickly injected him with an emetic needle, causing him to fall ill, which meant I couldn't push him into the water like I mentioned earlier. This meant I had to just subdue him with a crowd of bystanders watching me do it. They immediately alerted all nearby guards as to what I was doing. As I was pushing him into the water, I could hear guards shouting and running over. I had to book it to the boat, as even two shots from an assassin is enough to take 47 out in the later missions. I managed to reach the boat without taking too much damage, allowing me to escape Sapienza in Italy and complete my freelancer run without using a single weapon. Thank you for watching all the way through, and since I was able to keep your attention that long, why don't you subscribe for more content just like this.